Welcome to my review of the Lumia 950 camera. This is going to be a fairly in-depth review on this particular model. What I want to do is show you what it's capable of as well as the operation of the app and there's been some changes since the anniversary update. I've listed on screen some of the key features. We've got ice lens, f1.9 quite fast, a slightly larger sensor than normal too as well as raw capture. Now this is the app post anniversary update and we'll just dive into the settings just to show you what's available there. And you have an option with pushing and holding the camera button for video or photo burst. You change the aspect ratio 4.3 or 16.9. And we have various framing grids available too. Go back out to the screen and we'll see that come up. Now you'll see the image size is actually 19 megapixels which is a bit lower than the sensors capable of capturing. And also note that you go down to eight if you're using the RAW as well. You have a time-lapse setting and the living images, which we'll look at later. Just to show you the video too, we have various frame rates available for that from 4K 30 frames per second, down to about 24 and 720p. We also have a high-speed shooting mode for video too. Now the shutter button on top has two stages, so you can use it pretty much like a camera. In other words, half press for focus and then fully press to take the shot. And that's something you don't get on a lot of phones now, and that's something which I actually miss myself. You can also touch the screen to focus. And the focus speeds are quite quick on this. It's not as fast as some of the latest phones, but it's pretty quick. If you want to, you can use the traditional on-screen shutter button. You'll see face detection has come up there. The metering will bias towards the focus point as well, so bear that in mind if you're moving that around a scene, particularly a wide-angle one. Double tap or pinch and hold to zoom in and out. Fairly standard procedure for that. And if you flick this out, you'll see you have your settings available here. So on the left, we have the white balance. We have presets for that. This is the focus. You can see manual focus. There's no peaking, but you can actually see on the screen where what's in focus fairly clearly or set it to infinity as I've done here. ISO is from auto, 50 all the way up to 3200. You just have to be careful not to push along with the app. Sometimes I've done that. And the shutter speed range is from around four seconds all the way up to 16,000 of a second, which is pretty quick. Um, exposure compensation is available plus or minus three stops. You notice you don't have an aperture adjustment on this, and that's not surprising. It's using an electronic shutter to control the exposure. Along the top bar here, you can also selectively pick out one of the settings that you want or several. You see here I've got the white balance, and you can actually take pictures with this on-screen display too. So even though it might get in the way of the image to a degree, it doesn't stop it from using it like that. Now the panoramic mode has been brought back with the anniversary update. You need to flip the phone around to do that and try and keep it fairly steady. Looking at the video quickly, there's a torch button at the top, which gives you a video light with three LEDs on the flash. So you get quite a good fill on that. And the tortoise icon gives you the slow motion capture 120 frames a second. Now here's an example of some living images. This is an example where you might not want it. There's wind outside and it was uh, it picked that up and created sort of a couple of seconds with movement. Now here's an example where you might want the living image. I'm just stroking the cat here. As you can see, you've, uh, it detects movement and it kicks off with that. So make sure you look whether or not you want that on or not. This is a HDI. You can go in and change the exposure afterwards. It actually keeps the files on the phone. And here's another example of HDR. Um, at the higher settings, it can look a bit pumped. As you can see here, it's increased the saturation as well. You can save that or go back and change it anytime you want. And with flash, this is quite a nice feature. You can have all of the flash as it was or scale it down so no flash was included. So after the shot's taken, you can decide if you wanted to keep the flash or some of the flash in the final exposure, which is unusual. Here I'm outside, I'm just looking really for the lens and 
into the corners. The Zeiss lens is sharp. Don't have any obvious issues that I've seen with this lens. From corner to corner, it seems pretty sharp to my eyes. There's no obvious significant softening on any of the corners that I've looked at. And in terms of detail, you might notice in the shadow areas, you sometimes start to get some mottling or softening in detail areas, particularly in low contrast, and that's not uncommon for a smaller sensor camera. There is a bit of edge sharpening going on as well. They're being slightly aggressive on the edge sharpening, but not anywhere near as much as some camera makers that I've actually used with phones. Good details on this, and the exposure was also accurate too. Sometimes you can get some slight purple fringing. On this sample, bear in mind now all of these are shot auto. I haven't made any manual adjustments at all when taking the pictures. Now this is a 8 megapixel because I was shooting raw as well. And we've got good details, good exposure, with some slight highlight loss. This is the raw file which I'm working on now. You can see I've made an adjustment to the color balance. You will sometimes see this on this phone, that it will come out slightly warm, um, possibly a bit orangey magenta bias. Um, that's something I think Microsoft could look at with the auto white balance. This has had no sharpening at all on it. If I go back to the original, you'll see, again, you've kind of got that orangey look, which is the color balance is just off, basically. Um, it happens perhaps a bit more than it should do, so it's something to, to bear in mind, particularly with overcast scenes where it overcompensates. The good news is there is some reasonable highlight recovery as well with the raw files. There's another shot here, which was taken with the rich capture. This takes multiple shots at EV0, then it underexposes a shot and then overexposes a shot and blends them together. So you get good details in the shadow. You see they're not blacked up or blocked up at all. The colors can be slightly contrasty, slightly saturated. That's perhaps something I might change with the camera. In other words, a couple of picture modes, maybe a more neutral one, but it's done a good job of holding on to the highlights too. So that rich capture or HDR mode is quite good. Um, you won't always want to use it. And um, the auto seems to come in, kick in a bit more than it did before the anniversary update. Here's an example where the color balance has gone a bit cool. We have a sunset scene. You would normally expect to have a more orange hue with this type of picture. So the color balance is something to keep an eye on with this camera. Unfortunately, there isn't any Kelvin adjustments, uh, which is something I think Microsoft should look at because that is a disadvantage compared to some other camera apps. In terms of the features and manual controls, though, there isn't much to argue with. This will give you an example of the depth of field effect. We see we've lost some highlights in this shot. This is one shot that I would have dropped the exposure a bit. Details are very good here in the eye where I'm focusing on, on the statue. You see the histogram there. Now bear in mind, this isn't a big sensor. It's bigger than some of the camera phone sensors, but you can get some defocused effect on the background and the rendering generally is pretty good. If you're fairly close to the subject, you can put the background out a bit. Just dropping the exposure down a bit. Now on this scene, just to give you an idea of the auto settings where the sun is going down again, we've lost some highlights in the top area even with the rich capture, not surprising really with the shop light, but overall it did a pretty good job. Slightly warm again, but um, pretty good for the type of shot. Now, close up photography, this camera does well. You can get to about 10 centimeters distance and the details are good. Certainly nothing to complain about in that area. For people shots, this one came out quite well. Sometimes there is a slight orange cast that you can get with the flash with people shots. Um, not exactly sure what it is. I think it's just a general auto white balance that needs uh, adjusting a bit with the camera. Here's a shot in uh, ISO 400. You can start to see now with the noise reduction in very low light eating away at the details. It's smoothing them over in the lower contrast areas. It's still quite acceptable considering the low light conditions and here's a shot same again ISO 400 
but shot in RAW. Just to show you how much noise there is with all the noise reduction off, you can see there's quite a bit of blue channel noise with this, and Lightroom does quite a good job at suppressing that. So normally I would just leave the color noise reduction at default and you can go in and change the luminance noise reduction as you wish. It's certainly not super noisy considering the size of the sensor. You are helped out with the faster aperture, f1.9 gathers quite a bit more light than some of the camera phones out there. So even in low light, this particular scene here, ISO 400 is not actually that high really. What I've done is actually increase the exposure over a stop, which you wouldn't normally do with a, a small sensor. And it seems to have coped fairly well. So, um, you'll want to go in and adjust the luminance noise reduction. I don't find it too annoying myself as a sort of grain effect, but you can go in there and adjust that and smooth that over. Now this is a really low light shot. We're at ISO 2000. There is some slight camera shake because a third of a second, even the optical image stabilization, as good as it is, can't really cope with that. So bear in mind that if you're doing a lot of night photography, obviously something like a phone tripod mount would work quite well for you, but it did a pretty good job. It's certainly usable and the noise isn't excessive for the ISO either. Now regarding the raw shooting, it's something you'll have to decide yourself whether or not it's worth using. Um, many cases, the JPEGs, you can adjust the color balance yourself. You can do minor adjustments to color balance. Um, obviously, once you start adjusting things like exposure excessively, it's going to degrade the image much more than the raw files would. So you may be better off for certain subjects using the raw capture. Um, you can also use other software, not just Lightroom here, but it seemed to work quite well with uh, Adobe Lightroom that I'm using. So my summary on the camera is overall, and I was just using it purely as a replacement for a normal camera and just snapping away, is that it's actually very good. It would certainly be up there within the top four or five cameras and probably do as good or if not slightly better than some of the current models on the market right now. There's just two things Microsoft need to do. One is give you Kelvin white balance adjustment and also some image adjustments for the picture styles which just aren't present. But this is a very solid camera for this particular price point, especially more so after the anniversary update and the much reduced price.